The Russian campaign has failed. Napoleon must retreat back to Paris. His remaining forces are running for the Russian border. And this is the Battle of Berezina, where their fate will be decided. What's up, guys, and welcome back. I am Pope John Paul, and we're here with another Napoleon Total War 3 historical battle. And this is a glorious battle, and one I was taking part in, in fact. I was playing as one of the Russian armies. Um, but yes, if you don't really know about uh, the Battle of Berezina, it's, uh, it's a retreating action that takes part in the... Um, in the retreat of uh, like the French army and basically they have to fight for like the crossings over here which are they're actually a bit more uh, like stable than they were early in history honestly they were not this stable I mean I think they like made a small pontoon bridge and then a lot of troops had to just cross through the icy water but yes the French army had to basically retreat while well under a uh, cannon fire across a bridge and uh, yeah it was very very tight thing basically it was very close that the French army could have just been cut off and destroyed in Russia and uh, including Napoleon would have been involved in that um, but yeah so in history it's kind of like it's not really a French victory because the French just survive um, and escape but I guess you could say it's like a Russian defeat because they failed to capture the French army uh, in a sense but yeah so anyway we'll go over the course quickly we have uh, we have Dutrov here who is playing, uh, like, who's defending, like, sort of, like, the main advance. I think there's going to be Davu and, um, I can't actually remember who else is coming up. I think Davu and uh, maybe, uh, I actually, yeah, I can't remember who else is coming up. There's another, like, major French army coming up this way. And uh, they are going to be coming up and trying to, like, push and take this, uh, this bridge. And then we also have, in reserve, I believe we have Victor and I think it's Ney. I think with the other two that were uh, given the the job of like sort of like defending the rear guard and uh, stopping uh, Tomasov here and stopping another Tomasov army from uh, from crossing, well not either like either crossing this river or just like stopping them from attacking Davu who was trying to like take the crossing. So yeah, Davu's basically and whoever the other French army is, have got the job of basically uh, taking the the bridges and then Ney and Victor kind of going to just stop the other Russians from arriving and surrounding like the French forces uh, and the final Russian army over here is uh, Bagration who is going to be like sort of shelling the uh, he's going to be shelling the French as they come across here and just like firing on them so it's going to be really tough for the uh, for the French to be able to like get across because they're going to be harassed from literally every side so really their first job is trying to smash through Dutrop's army here and then it gives them like a clean uh, like sort of access point to this bridge. I don't really, really want to be able to like leave Dutrov like even slightly alive or like on this side of the river because he could just then harass the French. So yeah, that's kind of their first job. Um, but yes, if you're enjoying seeing NTW3 on the channel, I would like to see some more. And do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're not here, and a comment to show your support. It's always very, very much appreciated, guys. Um, yeah, just keep it up. Uh, all the support is very much appreciated. And it's also if you'd like to get involved in some NTW3 action, then feel free to join the Discord. The link is down below in the description, as always. Uh, there's a really great community there for NTW3. We do a lot of uh, historical battles, scenarios, and all sorts of stuff like that. So it's uh, it's always great to have new members join. And uh, yeah, so it looks like looks like France is nearly in position. It looks like we've got we've got some Frenchies arriving now. It's gonna annoy me. I can't remember who the other uh, French commander was, and I can't even tell you because uh, like can't even hover over and just say oh it was such and such because <laughs> they got rid of that which is so annoying and now I can't tell what unit is what and what uh, and who is who but I mean most of the French units I am aware of oh I think it might have been was it Udino I think it might be Udino actually I you know what I think it's Udino and I think it's Davu that are attacking because and the only reason I really think that is because these are Swiss and Udino has all the Swiss units. So I think it might be Udino and uh, Suchet. Uh, not Suchet. Udino and uh, Davu who are attacking this way. Suchet is too busy in Spain at this moment in time. He's probably in nice sunny Spain. Not envying being here in cold Russia. Freezing. Getting frostbite. Losing limbs. But yes, as you can see here. Uh, I am actually playing as this Tomasov army here. I've uh, had no issues crossing this river. I honestly thought um, they might try and defend the river and use this building as a like a as a defensive point and I was gonna have to storm it um, but no that's not the case and my uh, my ally gets across he has a lot more cav than me he has a very small infantry army but uh, a lot of cav which I was kind of glad of because I didn't bring much myself uh, and then we've got, we've got some infantry here we've got some Germans I think from uh we've got some Germans we've got, like Prussians actually um, but yeah they're in the they're in the forest and then the 
scaring the dragoons here, and I doing a bit of a having a bit of a duel now. Yeah, we got like the variants here, and we got some. I have no idea what these. Are. But yeah, a lot of German forces here now dueling with the Russians. So the first little bit of a line battle is underway, and I don't think the Russians really were uh, expecting the the French to be here. I don't know, but I guess the. Well, they had to be somewhere, but they, yeah. I don't know if they just thought they were going to be in this forest. They thought they were going to probably retreat even further. Because there is quite a distance between the uh, the two French forces at this point. And, uh, yeah, you've got lots of, like, lots of Germans here. This must be Ney's army, then. Because Ney had all the Germans. Yeah, lots of Bavarians here. Oh, these Bavarians. They probably wish they'd never signed up for the uh, Russian campaign. They're like, the Russian campaign, that sounds great. Let's go and beat up. The, uh, the Tsar. It sounds like a brilliant idea. What time are we going in? Oh, winter? No, that's a terrible idea. Why did we sign up? But uh, we've got this, uh, looks like there's a little like, light cavalry. You know, he's going to try and come forward and change his mind. The Russians here dueling back. This is at the point that France is uh, still like pretty weak. Like, it's still pretty weak. It's uh, had its debuff, so hopefully Russia will be able to kind of like match it in a line battle. We'll have to see. I mean, it's not going to it's not going to be very much of a fair fight over here, uh, unfortunately, because this is a 2v1. But we are seeing, looks like some French cavalry coming forward. Looks like there's some, uh, some Lancers and some Hollands. They look like they're going to go for the guns here, which is a really good idea. And they're going to get shot at by every infantry unit as it comes by. Look at this. This is horrific. Break that unit really easily. That's a nice, easy, easy win there for the Russians. And their guns survive a little longer. They got, what they got here? A 6 pounder? A 12 pounder? Oh boy. You can see the French are moving up with purpose, and they are really pushing like around this flank. There's not much that the Russians can do either. So the French are like pushing to try and obviously secure the flank here and get across the pontoon bridges, and also uh, like to just destroy Dutrov. Honestly, I don't know. I can't remember exactly. I don't know if they had to destroy in the entirety of like Dutrov before they could uh, cross the river. But I mean, if they, I mean, in reality, I would be, I would be thinking that they'd want to send some troops across, try and secure it, but. I guess there's an entire Russian army waiting. I'm, I know this Russian army here can't uh, move until either Dutrov's defeated or the French are starting to push for the uh, the pontoon bridges. So there were quite a few rules, um, but also and also like these two French armies here, they have to keep retreating. They can't just stand and fight and like try and defeat the Russians. They have to kind of like fight uh, like, and then retreat a little bit. So. Yeah, so yeah, that's basically the thing. Also, I honestly think, uh, like here, I was being far too defensive. I was like thinking that like, France was going to attack me, come and get me. But really, no. They, I mean, they are kind of, they are setting up guns here. They've got a horse artillery setting up. And this is a problem. I was kind of like, huh, how am I going to deal with this? I don't know. I'm often not, like, not play NTW3. I'm quite a cautious player. Um, I certainly try and like see what the enemy's doing and then react to that and try and beat that. And uh, it often works. But uh, in this scenario where I'm supposed to be being aggressive and, like, I'm supposed to be the one pushing back the French, it's not really a good idea. But, yeah, I am now... I mean, I guess I'm, I must be seeing, like, the guns pulling up and then deciding this is, uh, this is too much. We've got to send... We've got to send forward the boys. I mean, I need to send, send them forward. So we've got lots and lots and lots of, like, grenadier units uh, somewhere. They're, like, all over here, I think. Yeah, all my grenadiers are here. But, yes, I'm sending them all off into the forest now and hopefully we can go and find some Frenchies. I'm hoping. I'm bringing up my own artillery. I was, I think, wanting to bring up my own artillery, a six pound hit. I don't know why I didn't bring a horse artillery. But they were quite expensive, I think, so that's probably why. Um, but I really want to bring mine up and then a duel with their artillery, maybe, and just shoot their, shoot their cav. Um, because, I, I mean, some of, my, some of my units come from square, but not many. I should have really put some on the flank. But still, um, it's going to be a rough one there. And then we've also got more infantry now appearing. Yes, as you can see here, the uh, the Russian and French battle is very much raging on over here. And we've got, it uh, looks like some serfs or something like that going in. They're going to bravely go into combat and fight the uh, the French lines. They're breaking some French though, this is good. And the Russians over here, they might break the French here as well. Both broke, but that's definitely a win for the French because like their unit is like just terrible, like in cost-wise, compared in comparison. 
Looks like the uh, Russian Caval here is also has won. Dragoon's beating uh, Chasseur Cheval. Uh, so that's really good. So it seems like, you know, the Russians doing a good start. I mean, they're, they're doing well, but they are obviously taking casualties. And the French just have more troops that they can throw at them. Like, they have more and more. It is a 2v1, after all. See this 12-pounder try, trying to get out there. I do believe that this Dutrov can retreat across the pontoon bridges. But as you can see here, the French have kind of almost secured this one. They've, like, got past it. So they are going to be able to stop the Russians from taking it. I don't know if this Russian unit here is going to get outgunned. Sure, it needs to re try and reform. But uh, obviously, there is a lot going on. This poor Russian player has got a lot to uh, deal with. Lots of uh, units back here that are ready. Sort of receive this French force. It's a Russian unit here that needs to get back. But yeah, it seems like. I mean. It seems like it's starting okay for the Russians. I mean, they are obviously going to take a pretty big pounding. It's how much of this army can they get back across this pontoon bridge? Or, like, get to, like, the fire edge of the map to kind of, like, just keep distracting the French? Really? Uh, this is a little, yeah, lots of Swiss here. This is obviously Udenor. The Russians keep on retreating. Some, uh, these are kind of like, these are, like, some sort of militia as well. But they look a little, a little bit more smart, you know, in green. A bit more smart than these guys, anyway, than brown uniforms. Ah. Put some more of them here. With their bearskin hats. The Russians have taken a, a, a building. I'm not quite sure which building. Oh god. Friendly fire, friendly fire. No, this is not good. They're getting shot front and back of this poor unit. Line infantry here. You need to be picked. You need to be careful when you're uh, resetting up your infantry that you, like, if you're putting it behind enemy lines, like, your own lines, make sure it goes off fire well. Like, they're gunning down their own men here. This cannot be good. This is not good for morale. Uh, our general is under attack. Uh, my general's under attack. Oh, yeah, he was getting sniped out. That was, uh, I forgot about that. Yes, and at this point, I now find the, uh, the French army in the forest here. And I kind of was like, oh, God, there's more than I expected. A lot more than I expected. And at this point, I wasn't really interested in, a, in like in a proper confrontation with the French, which sounds a bit cowardly because obviously I'm supposed to be the aggressor. But if I kind of like lose a lot of my troops, I I was kept thinking. I know there's like a two v it's a two v two here, and they are supposed to be retreating. But like this army over here is majority cab. It's actually having a cab fight right now. This army is majority cab, so I'm almost most of the infantry force over here. Um, so if I lose, if I lose my, uh, if I lose the infantry fight, then uh, it's a bit, it's a bit of a worrying sight for, like, the French, like, because then these two armies here can just well retreat slash advance Our men are running, sir. Uh, towards the pontoon bridges, and they don't really have like any threat behind them. They're just walking towards it at their own pace, and don't have to worry about anything. Anyway, back over here, it's not looking good for Russia, but he's sitting in his cab. He's got his, like, Hussars here. These guys should do okay. They have been broken. I thought they might break at least one of these in Juniors, but apparently not. Anyway, we are back. Uh, I did unfortunately have to just go and uh, get some... <laughs> I had to go and answer the door. Uh, there was a, a postman wanting some post. But, uh, well, this wanting to give me some post. The if the postman was wanting post, I would have none to give him. But anyway, uh, yeah, so um, we are now back. And as you can see, the Russians are in uh, still a, a pretty dire situation. Building lost. Oh, they were fine with this building over here? Oh, there's 55 out of 55 Frenchies in here now. There's a lot of Frenchies in it. Is this the rest of the unit that's stood outside? I think that's a bit overkill. I want to put a different unit in there. Yeah, it's a very small building, 55 out of 55. Not going to fit many troops in there. Look at this, though. Russia is running for the uh, for the bridge. He's got his six-pound here. He's trying to desperately get across. And he's got a... Is this a six-pound he's managed to get? Yes, Dutrov. Had a lot of artillery, in fact. Doesn't look like he's going to get much else across, though. Uh, I mean, I'd be surprised if he gets this 12-pounder across. Because it's literally by the, uh, the French infantry. But here we go. We've got to see some uh, Dragoons going in. They are going to try and... Uh, Slow down the infantry, I guess, and maybe like make a shield for like the inf some infantry and artillery to get across. Obviously, some men will be have to left have to be left behind to sacrifice themselves. They need to be careful. Yeah, that um, 
It's like surf unit here, just broke. It's just got shot on the back. Yeah, how are we going in? And infantry. That's always good. They're breaking infantry there. And the Tribunes now are pushing on, but they are probably going to get broken. And look at this. Yeah, infantry setting up. I mean, they're just going to gun down this crew. This crew is not going out. I mean, I'd be surprised. Yeah, there you go. Well, that's just going to break that artillery. That 12 pound is definitely not going out. I mean, it still has 30 out of 30 crew. So about all of them survived the point blank range volley. But morale is low. But morale is very, very low. And this is kind of like the destruction of Dutrov that we're witnessing right now. Dutrov's going to get not much across. He looks like he's going to get a, an artillery piece. Maybe two. Yeah, he's actually got Dutrov across. So that's good, at least. Uh, I mean, you should get some infantry across. It looks like the French are, like, they're not really pushing too hard. If I was the French, I'd be maybe going to bayonet charge at this point. Like, Russia is, I know Russia's good in bayonet charge, but Russia is just solely interested in getting across this river. Or maybe he's thinking if I just waste enough gunpowder, we'll kill, we'll kill the Russians here. You see, they are beelining for it. I mean, there's a load of Russians retreating this way. These may return, but they are going to be stuck on the wrong side of the river. And here we go, Russia's going in. Russia's going in, he's going to sacrifice more troops to try and get some of his army across. More brave men fighting for the motherland. Killing the motherland's enemies, the Russia's enemies, the Tsar's enemies. Oh god, they all broke pretty quickly actually. I don't know if that sacrifice is really worth it. They need some good strong grenadiers in here. They don't seem like they've got any of them. Run! Run, Russia! Flee for your lives! The Swiss are coming! You don't want to be defeated by the Swiss. To be fair, these troops are kind of retreating across the right side of the river, though. They're going the right way. Even if they, like, are routing, they, they may return. But look at this. The columns are moving. Bagration is on the move. Obviously, none of these generals are historically accurate. I know people are like, oh, Bagration wasn't there, and, like, neither was Tomasov or Dutrov. Yes, it was, in fact, an admiral. I was in charge of most of the operations of, uh, of the Russian army. And Wittgenstein was the other one who was in charge as well. But uh, you, there's no Wittgenstein Corps because he was just like a, a major commander. He was uh, like a commander-in-chief, not a like, like a, not a corps commander. So unfortunately we're having to use who we have available. So yeah, Bagration is being used. And uh, yes, he is now moving towards the, uh, towards the bridges. And you can see the French are already across. They're already across. I don't know why they're really stopping here. They should be dashing across. They should be getting as many of these guys across the bridge as they can. Like, I don't know what the uh, the holdup was, really. Um, at this point, we were, like, being told, you need to get moving. Like, Pope, you need to get moving. And uh, I started to move. We are kind of, like, making progress, as you can see over here. We are routing a few French troops. Um, there is a lot more French troops here than, obviously, you can see. Um, like, this French infantry line goes the whole way through this forest. Um... It is a very, very big infantry line. I was kind of daunted by it because even though the French had a debuff, the French infantry I have seen still outclasses Russians. There is another uh, historical battle I have yet to show you um, where uh, where the French like get absolutely uh, like they're, they're really they do really well. They they, they uh, the, it's still a close fight, but uh, like Russian infantry is still kind of sucky against French infantry. So uh, hopefully. We can certainly turn that around in this battle. I, it's kind of why I'm looking for battles I can win, not battles that I just need to have. I'm looking for ones that I can actually win. Like I was saying, like we need to be taking out units like this, like this unit here is a perfect unit to take out because it's on its own, it's isolated. We could possibly, like I'm sending cav up to go and deal with it. If they form square, great. There's infantry close by that can go and get it. But I think I got told not to go for it in the end. Like we were massing a lot of cav over here because they also have a lot of cav here. I mean, it's not great cab, but it's still French cab. I mean, it's looking like uh, it's like things like uh, maybe like Hussars. I mean, we've got like goons here, Cheval. So they got some nasty stuff. I think oh, so much. There's like six units of cab over here. This is like this is arguably probably most of the cavalry of the French army just positioned in this one spot here. Like of all the French armies like put together, this is probably where all their cab has gone. Um, so this is really important if we take this out because if we take this out, we get cab superiority. And cab superiority in NGW3, massive. 
massive, massive advantage. Um, so yeah, really, really good thing to go and try and take out. Oh, here. Oh, it's a little German unit. I don't know where this unit's from. Like Hess, maybe? I'm not really sure. I don't recognize this uniform. Some part of me also thinks it's Prussian, but it's definitely not Prussian. It looks cool, though, in this nice little green. Yeah, we are. Now, look at this. All the cab. We have so much cab as well, though. That's the thing. Like, even though, yeah, we may have cab. I think we probably have cab superiority already over here, but it's French cab. you got to, like, you got to give it some credit. It's good. Oh, look at that. Yeah, I mean, this is not good when, like, we're just setting cab into squares. I mean, the French can also just form square with most of their infantry. It's so frustrating. But yeah, so uh, we're kind of having to deal with that right now. Look at this. These boys are already fighting. Gutting down some of our troops. These guys doing okay. Here we go, French Cav now going in, and it's actually managed to get into this, uh, not French Cav, sorry, Russian Cav going in, and it's managed to get these Bavarians. And there you go, they're probably going to take them out. I mean, you know, the French bring up and cover their own, they are bringing up Cav, and they're going to support this fight. And actually, the Russian Cav broke, even though it charged French infantry, it was so surprising. Um, but I'm actually bringing up some of my infantry and we're going to try and deal with this. And the Russians like, well, we're going to send in more cab then. We're sending some more hussars. We're going to kill them. And they broke them that time. And now you can see the French sending up some uh, more cabs and their own hussars by the looks of it. So some German cabs going in. And then look at this. I'm not seeing an infantry. I was like, screw it. We're, we're going into like, we're having a big old melee fight here, it seems. And look at this. More and more cabs. We've got like, a little like, hussar, uh, like a little Olin unit coming up here. And I'm seeing more infantry, it's like Grenadiers going in. It's an absolute mess over here. And this is kind of where we start to gain some traction. We are now starting to break French cav units. And we've also managed to cut off some infantry, as you can see here, from any sort of retreat because that cab broke. And we're now getting in. And I'm, I mean, I kind of like the form, like the strat I was going for. I was going for an infantry and cavalry combination. I was trying it out, and it kind of works. Like, if you're aggressive with infantry and into a cab fight, nine times out of ten, it's like, certainly with Russians anyway, certainly with the Russians, you're going to do quite well. But I am losing my cavalry. My cavalry is all breaking. My dragoons, not the greatest, uh, to be honest. All breaking here. This is all my cab breaking. And actually, these uh, grenadiers kind of have to, like, fight on alone now. They're like, where's our cab support gone? Come back. And they're getting kind of cut down at the moment by it. But I'm sending in more infantry. I'm sending in more, even more grenadiers here. It's kind of a risk, but I really should probably just be gunning down the troops. But I'm trying to also just pin the cab down. Like, I don't want the cab just to run away. You can see one grenadier breaks. I just kind of want, until more Russian cab arrives, which is now has arrived, I needed like just to uh, pin down the cab in combat. I didn't want it to get away and get back over here. Because you can see that the French army's left. It is left, like these French forces here, just to their, their doom. I mean, the cav could probably get, probably get out of there, but the infantry is definitely dead. Like, this unit here is in square. It is, uh... It's, it's kind of in trouble, to be honest. This, I mean, I don't know why the Russians haven't just charged it, but there you go. There you go. All the French cab broken. And, uh, yeah, I was just, I mean, actually not quite all broken. Still got a little Hussar unit here. Oh, no, Dragoon unit. It looks like a German unit. Like a, uh, I don't know, Bavarian unit, maybe? While this is all going on, the French hadn't really moved across the, uh, the river. They got a bit across, but the Russians are here, and they're, they've arrived. And Bagration is now able to like, get cavalry. Look at this. He's going to be able to get cavalry in behind. And I don't know what he's going for. I mean, oh, nasty hits here. Yeah, he finds a unit that's not forming square and goes in for it. It looks like it's a uh, like carabiner unit or something like that. And it's broken pretty quickly. These units form in square, though. These units can get now focused down, though, by uh, Russian infantry. And the caps got out there with very little losses. It's really good. Uh, Bag Bagration's over here with a bit of Dutrov's army. Dutrov did get some forces across the river. Spread to him there. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, the Rush, uh, the French, sorry. They're struggling to get across. I mean, they've got a lot of Swiss now that they're going to come across. It's a tough, tough fight. And also, 
Um, they've got the issue of the uh, Russians of these guns here. These guns are going to be very, very nasty. They're going to get some nice flanking shots into any troops that are just kind of sitting on that side of the river. So you can see that the Russians got most of their troops set up here, and they just, like, that's all they're doing. I don't know where their artillery is, but, uh, oh, it's kind of like here. This is Dutrops, anyway. What's he got here? He's got a six-pounder. He looks like he's just going to fire straight down, uh, Stay straight down this river, or we'll send down the bridge anyway. He's a really nice position. Anything can down. So that's really good to see. And yeah, you can see the French actually kind of retreating. They're like, nope, you know what? We're going to have to try another day. Berezina is just not uh, being taken today. Well, not Berezina, but like the, the crossing's not being taken. Berezina is not really a place. At least not on this map. Um, but yeah, as you can see, the French. We'll just get the, like, they've got the main map up here. You can see the French slowly getting closer to the main army here. I mean, I was kind of, like, happy with where it was. I was like, if, um, Bagration can keep the French this side of the river, and then we keep pushing hard, we can just surround the French around this, um, around this village here. And we can then just slowly, um, we can just, we can just kind of then take the battle at our own pace. Because the French have to keep pushing this way. They, this is their objective. They've been told. It's like almost hard-coded into their uh, their minds. This is where they have to go. Um, they can't keep pushing back with this way. They can obviously a little bit maybe if they need. If they were being encircled, they can obviously push back a little bit. But they aren't supposed to be being aggressive against our armies. They're supposed to be retreating away from our armies. Um, because in theory, behind our armies are even more Russian armies. Uh, that is like the, the whole premise. Um, but yeah, so the Russians need to, uh, the French sorry, need to keep pushing this way. And uh, I was basically thinking, if we can kind of get the, the French and all tie them up in here, we can then just, uh, just pound them with artillery until they uh, either they die or uh, they eventually just cross again. Because I personally think the Russian position over here is quite strong. Like, they come across, I mean, they have, they've kind of retreated at the moment, I think, just because of the artillery. But um, if the French come across, basically, they are, like, having to cross... Uh, in like columns, they're usually quite grouped up. The Russians already probably set up, and they're gunning down troops. It's doing a lot of damage to morale. So uh, we will see how that goes. And you can see here the French retreating, uh, quite organised, but a little bit disorganised. Poles here, this is cool. Good to see the poles and various other troops. Lots of French and Germans. And we've got one of the marshals here. I think this might be Ney. We got another one here. Ney and Victor doing their bit. Yep, yeah, seems like the French. It's kind of a bit of a slow point of the fight now. I'm just kind of, I might just uh, fast forward while we wait because this is kind of a bit of a slow fight. It's kind of because the French uh, kind of. Uh, they because we got so occupied with what remained of the French cav, we kind of actually lost a little bit of ground chasing them. I've kind of got this line infantry here that has been chasing the French down, um, well, as long as possible. I've been trying to keep in touch with it, trying like the men remind of the are a remind the uh, remind the uh, French that we're still chasing them, and the rest of our army, like uh, the rest of my infantry and my allies' infantry, and even some of his cav, is uh, still a bit slow in like pushing up and catching up. Which is, again, why I don't really want to be aggressive with this line of infantry. Because I don't want to just attack the French uh, bit by bit. I want to attack them with our full force. Because uh, that's the best chance we have of winning. <laughs> of winning this fight. But you can see the French are almost back here now at, uh, at the river. I mean, you can see like what's left of the armies that were trying to cross the river. I mean, this won't be just all This won't be all of it, but this is the majority of it. I think it... Well, actually, we might be able to see everything now the French have. But yeah, the French didn't have much left to try and cross this river. And this, Probably the same amount as the Russians, which is not good odds. Like they need, I would say, mo almost double the troops that the Russians have on their side of the river to try and get a successful landing. Um, that's my opinion, anyway. Just because it's a river crossing, it's, a, it's like crossing a river is a costly, costly business. Got a nice, like, it's like a German artillery piece here as well. It's horse artillery set up. It's like it might be dueling with the uh, the Russian artillery across the river, or maybe it's just taking chunks out of the infantry. Either one. The six pounder is trying to return fire. I don't like the angle that this. Oh, I was gonna say I don't like the angle that gun's taking, but it's lumbering up. That's why. Okay. Um, but yeah, it does seem at the moment. Oh yeah, just look at this. So yeah, I don't think this French general realized what was about to happen. I don't think he realized about the stake. These are Russian states, and there you go. That killed a general. I think that was Ney has been killed there. 
And that was huge. I was like, oh my gosh, yes. Brilliant. That means morale for the French army is going to be lower than ever. Uh, unlike this force is here. And, uh, yeah, we didn't even have to do anything about that. We, I mean, there was a few times that we tried to go for uh, for marshals, but uh, we didn't quite make it. This one's actually very, very close as well to stakes. And uh, luckily that one had realized. I think this one's Victor. Because, yeah, I think Ney was the one that got killed. So uh, Ney's like German and uh, French troops are going to be on low morale now. And that's even better because, I mean, they have the majority of the infantry in the army left. So they're on reduced morale. That's even better. Uh, I don't know why Russia here was debating about sending his dragoons across. I think he was going to try and silence his guns. I think he was sick of them. But uh, I was honestly just saying no. Just keep your uh, keep your cavalry. Keep it defensive. You are a defensive army. You don't need to be being aggressive like this. You don't need to be pushing across the bridges yourself. It's what the French want you to do probably is to just make you push across and get your army destroyed, and then they can just walk across unopposed. And then they, I think they have to then defend the bridges across uh, from us. That is kind of the aim of the battle. Once if they take. Take the bridges, they have to, like, defend, uh, like, they have to stop us from taking them, which they probably will do. Like, the Russians are going to struggle to retake their bridges. But, uh, yeah, we will fast forward once again, because it seems like no one is doing anything. Uh, at this point, I don't blame them, because the French, I can see why they don't want to cross, but uh, I think they, they do need to cross at some point. And it seems like that is just about to happen. It might be uh, crossing 2.0 about to take place here. And... The Allies have taken some build. Oh, the Russians have taken this building. Okay, but yeah, it seems like we've got one of the uh, one of the French corps now deciding uh, enough is enough, and we are sending our boys back across. And there you go. The drums have been sounded, and they are ready to go. And you can see the Russians already set up. I mean, they are giving them a bit of ground. I mean, I, to be honest, if I was them, I would have been scummy. I would have been waiting right here. I mean, scummy and waiting right, waiting right here. Not giving them a single bit of ground on this side of the river. But the, uh, I think this is Johnny playing as this Russian army. He was clearly too kind. He's got a lot of uh, light infantry. I guess so he can get that first volley off. Got a unit there of Zaritz. And I love the, I, I, the city of Zaritz. Uh, reminds me of that battle from one. Uh, map. What a great map. Just gunning out, gunning down those French there. They're just not even out of range, but it's not gonna have as great accuracy as the French, I don't think. I mean, light infantry just do better than light. Uh, light infantry, sorry, do better than light infantry at like a longer range. And their morale is not great. And also, as you can see here, the Russians have troops uh, like hidden in the. Uh, in the village, I don't know whether they were hidden, but they were like kept in reserve, and now they can come across, and then they can do, uh, they can like get a little flank going on. I mean, they're already breaking French troops here. This is really good. Like the, before the French can really set up and get a volley off, they're getting gunned down. Look at this, yeah. The French already like like no, we're going back across. I don't like this. Really, right now we should be pushing. But I was just watching, and I was like, well, what, what's the rush? Like France is getting beaten back every time decisively. Like over here as well. Like you can see, they're coming across in mass columns. This is going to be nice, easy targets of the Russians. Uh, like setting up his infantry, and we've got more Croatians infantry here, and they're like, they're going to have no problems here. Yeah, just gunning. I mean, they've actually managed to get across the French kind of set up on this side. That's a funny old trumpet, but there you go. Yeah, they, they managed to get across. Giving ground. They're giving the ground. Well, actually, no, they're just reforming. They may just be reforming. Yeah, we're still waiting. I think we were waiting for our uh, for our artillery to arrive. Which, I mean, mine's a long way away. But the uh, the other one's nearly here. And I think that's all we were waiting for was to wait for the artillery. Then we're just going to pound the French. But you can see this, like, this bridge over here, they're having no luck. This one over here, though, with the Swiss coming across. Kind of a bit more luck. Got some Swiss grenadiers here. They may, you know actually make some ground, but I mean, they're getting so close, they are punching hard. They're just gonna go to, I mean, I just go to melee. Here they go, yeah, the French going into melee. It's a risk. The Russians obviously very good at melee themselves. But, I mean, that's actually done quite well. They broke both these Russian units. They've done a very, very good job. The French got broken on this side, but they've got plenty of calves and dragoons. They may want to think about bringing them up to uh, counter charge the push, because the French, you know, making some progress over here. 
so, I mean, to be honest, we should have uh, started pushing as soon as we started to see uh, this, uh, this bridge it's starting to be lost because the French are making pros. And this is some big French units. We've got Grenadier's line. Oh boy. It's a good looking unit that's been dragged across here. And the Swiss Grenadiers are going to get set up. They're going to put a volley or two into the, uh, into the Russians, but the Russians will fire first. Fire at the boys! And the French carrying on the fight here. And they're going to go into the next wave of Russians. And they're desperately trying to get this gun as well. Oh, I think they might get it. But these French are pretty tired. Looks like they're, uh, I mean, looks like the French, you know, they actually, they didn't get the artillery. Well, they didn't get the artillery. I'm kind of surprised. Um, yeah, they are kind of routing a lot of the troops over here. The cavalry has been sent in, as you can see. The goons going in. They may route the French infantry, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a bad sign. It's a bit of a weakness. A weakness has been found on the line. Dutrop's troops have been pushed back. It's not just really migration over here, and you can see that the uh, French coming back across this side probably reinvigorated, but the Allies had a bit of luck. Really, we should be starting to push now because the French probably are loving this. They're probably thinking, "Yes, just hold these Russians back." I mean, this is a lot of French troops, though. I mean, I was, I was kind of honestly hoping that the uh, the Russians here might have enough to just defeat these remaining French forces, and then, then these armies here have no choice but to just kind of retreat. They have no choice but to attack, but also they have to. Retreat, uh, like defend at the same time. Uh, so that's kind of like what I was hoping for, but uh, no, they haven't really, uh, haven't really like even decided to like make a move yet. I mean, at this point, we we're like, yeah, screw it, just take out this infantry. There's a little infantry there. Goons are going to carry on. They may do. They may just carry on. They need to get out of that. They could just get one volley and they're in trouble. There you go, they're kind of in a little bit of trouble, getting gunned down a little bit. Not too bad though. But, I mean, got rid of that unit, and it's a good idea to get rid of skirmishes, I guess. They could obviously harass our guns. <laughs> Just hit his own dragoons there with his artillery. He definitely needs to move his artillery. It's like on a little bit of a ridge. You can't really see what's firing over it. He needs to get it almost to here. Like, he needs to get it almost to here, and then he's got a nice clean line of sight, really. Well, actually, I say that. This ground is not that great actually for infantry, like firing artillery. I take it back. But over here, it is looking a little bit dire now for migration. His dragoon's getting routed by a square. He needs to be careful. You can see over here that the French are basically across. They now managed to get cavalry across, which is a bad sign. When, they get, when the French get cavalry across, it's not a good sign. It's just search Cheval here. They're going to try and take out this gun. Are the guns going to be able to get a volley off? Quick! Load the gun! Load the gun! The cavalry's coming! No, it's not. It's not enough. Not enough. Oh, they nearly managed to do a volley. I heard them like the uh, the fuse going. No, not not quite enough. But yeah, some dragoons desperate trying to hold. Like I think they're like trying to retreat. Some like it's the grenadiers the line here. And I think I think the Russian player desperately wanted to take this unit out because it's going to be the main problem. But yeah, we need to push now. Uh, to be honest, uh, we were a little bit too passive. We should have been pushing a little bit harder. We are now making progress. And we try I'm trying to get around this flank. I really want to try and get around the flank. I know we should we just need to kind of just smash through this, but this is like where well, there's a large concentration of French troops here. And you can see the French are actually now giving ground because you can see that the French are getting across. The French are like, yeah, screw it. We're gonna just get we're gonna get moving. So I was like, right, we need to get moving. We need to get our own troops moving now. Uh, they've got no general. Or one of their armies has no general. Their morale will be lower. We need to just push. And push hard. And we have a lot of cavalry as well, which obviously is great while the French army is this side of the river, but once it gets to the other side, it's kind of going to be a bit tough to get it across. But I mean, Russia's still holding on. It's still pretty close. You need to take this artillery out. This is what the real problem is. I think they were begging us to try and take this artillery out. I'm like, well, we will try, but there is like a line of French in between us and the artillery. Um, it's not going to be easy to get to them. They've still got some cav. 
They got some, uh, looks like some Shisa Cheval of some sort here, maybe. And, uh, I mean, we can't see them, I don't think. But I'm pretty sure they have some cuirassiers somewhere to the French, which is the real worry. They have some, uh, I think we see them later on, but the, yeah, the French have some cuirassiers, which I am not a fan of. Not one bit, but yeah, you can see here, uh, Lion is going to try and scare off these uh, chasseurs. And a bit trying to protect their guns. It's always a smart idea. Whose guns are these? Right, Croatians, yeah. And you can see they've had to be, they've been fully pushed back now with the Russians from the, uh, from the, from the river, at least on this side. They are kind of still defending it on this side. They, like, as the French come across, they get gunned at, gunned at, but you know, it's not, it's not the same, it's not the same effect. And there you go, a general's been killed. They actually killed Bagration, who was, uh, sitting in this building. They just, general sniped him and just blew up the building. So that's a real shame. And, uh, yeah, they killed all, I think it was this general here, yeah, Mikhail, uh, I think it's like a combat general, a grenadier. That's a shame. That's going to do a lot of damage now to uh, the morale of uh, Bagration's army. Uh, so that was kind of unfortunate. That was a really unlucky uh, event. Otherwise, I think, like, his, the morale would obviously have the Russians would hold longer. But uh, that was a real unlucky, unlucky shot. But, I mean, there's still hope. There is still plenty of hope. There are plenty of Russians still here. They can do a lot of damage. There are plenty of French, though. It's the only problem. And this is kind of like the main showdown that's yet to go on. There's actually still a lot of troops on this battlefield. Like, a late stage of the game like this, there's still actually an awful amount of troops in the battle. Probably because we didn't do enough uh, so far to take them out. But as you see, the Russians desperately holding on. 1812 needs to be playing in the background right now. I'm getting that 1812 vibe right now. You can see the French setting up. They've got their grenadiers here. Look at these beautiful boys. You're gonna fire a volley for your emperor. Or well, maybe not. There we go. That was an okay volley. What's back here? What are they taking out over here? Is this another gun? Oh, it's Bagration's 12 pounder. Okay. I don't know why that was that far back, but fair enough. Dude drops still alive, but I don't think he really has an army. Uh, I think he is literally just the general. I mean, you might as well push, I mean, I can see why he's keeping line infantry back to defend the gun, but I mean, he needs to get, like, as much of as possible to try and support and just try and take out this force here of French here. I mean, he's got a unit here that he wants to, like, need, needs to send up. I mean, you could just try and just surround it, uh, like, like, hold it, pin it in place with one unit and then flank and just bayonet charge. He's got a chance. Like, there's the hope. I mean, you could also just use this general to try and route the, uh, try and route this, uh, infantry. Got to do something. But at this point, as you can see, we are now pushing the French now. Kind of trying to defend this uh, this village here. This is uh, I don't know how to say this. Stroidy, Stroidy. I don't know. I don't know how to say that village name. But they're trying to defend this village now, and I was like, right, we're gonna have to try and punch our way through this uh, this village. And look at this. The building's at 93%. We could probably do with taking that out. Do a lot of damage to the French unit there. Take this unit out. It's like 55 men that instantly, if they die, that unit's probably breaking. Look how much of the unit is just standing on ceremony outside. It's kind of funny. I don't know why this unit's still being like used to garrison there. We have managed to like isolate another unit, I, but we need to get more. We need to get more. Uh, I felt like we were playing like, um, like grand strategy games, trying to encircle unit. I mean, we are just playing a grand strategy game. What am I on about? We're trying to like encircle units and like just wipe them out entirely. That's what we've got to do. So we need, I need to get big encirclements. If you played Hearts of Iron, you know what I mean. Big encirclements. The Russians dueling here with the French. The French, didn't, I mean, there you go. I was gonna say the French aren't really firing back, but there you go. They did actually just return fire. They still have artillery, but I think it is still firing across the river. And you can see now the French are very much across in force, and the Russians having to retreat uh, themselves. And now they're the ones getting gunned down as they uh, march. Yeah, we need to get a move on. You can see there's some pretty decent units here. I don't know what these are. Like some sort of German grenadier, maybe? But they are breaking. Look at this. French units breaking. This is a good sign. I mean, these are a lot of, like... There are a lot of, like, Russian... Uh, not Russian, uh, like... 
German units over here. These definitely are a lot weaker than the, uh, the like than the, the proper French units, and uh, it looks like that unit is slowly being taken out in one way or another. It's getting gunned down, or it's getting charged by cavalry. They're desperate. They're actually really desperate to try and kill this unit if they can. I guess yeah, they want to keep in square, and then they want the uh, infantry to charge in. Sacrifice of the tribune. Yeah. But there you go. That unit is going to be murdered. And that is now dealt with. And uh, yeah, I am like trying to punch hard as quickly as possible now. I'm like seeing that the French are not are a lot more squishy, a lot more weak than I thought. And I'm also about to push in and take this uh, this building. So I'm gonna try. There you go. This unit's broken. And the build. Well, it looks like it's broken. Or is it just retreating? It's just retreating actually. They're, they're giving up the building. And I and I was told by my ally, you won't get into this village. You won't, won't get in. Two seconds later, I'm in this village. Uh, probably with the help of. Uh, the French is retreating, but also like my Russians are, my Russians are fresh. They're angry. They they're determined to break through to this because I was honestly thinking, I was saying, yeah, now I hold this building, they they can't hold the street, and then I hold the village. Like they can't hold the street means they can't hold the village, and then that means I hold the village, and then it means I have full access to these bridges, and then I can almost put off this French army. That was kind of my idea. It was like punch through here in circle. And then I also can then get back across and I can then try and support my Russian ally who is, Pagration is looking really desperate right now. This is looking desperate. I, I can sympathize now like watching a lot more on this fight over here. Sympathize with my, uh, my ally who was desperate, desperate saying, I need your men. Get me, give me your men. I need you to get across here. And we're doing our best we can. There's, there's only so much you can do. As you can see, they, the French are starting to waver. I mean, they are, like, breaking pretty quickly. And I now hold this village. I just needed to, like, I was trying to chase them down as quickly as possible. But the French at this point were in, like, ultra retreat mode. They were like, yep, everything retreats. But yeah, here you go. Here it is. Here's the cuirassier unit. They've just kept slyly just doing nothing. This is a fresh cuirassier unit that they've kept late game. And that's a real problem. That's the heaviest cavalry in this game. No... Uh, like, no Russians for any cuirassiers, but look at this, this is good. We're chasing down these, uh, these cavalry here, trying to get them. We need to keep harassing them, make sure they can't get across the river. Look at that mass French route, and I am desperately running for the, uh, the last few units here, trying to catch them out. You see the French also running for the river, I am desperately now trying to chase them. It's kind of turning into a bit of chaos, and the French are losing a lot of troops. But they're kind of in the same situation as, like, Dutrop all that time ago at the beginning of the battle. You remember that when the, they were desperately trying to get across the river? The Russians, now the French are trying to do that. And they're having to sacrifice cab to try and get their infantry across. Our men are running, sir. And uh, I think, yeah, you can see the cuirassiers have been... They've been told, no, we'd love you to come across, but we need you. We need you to defend against the uh, against the Russian horde. I really hope that they add a 1813 sort of like period Russian, uh, like French army. Because that would make for a really, really good, interesting core, like, battles. Because, you know, you could do, like, Bautzen and Dresden really, really effectively. Um, because the French army's not as good by that point. But it's still a force to be reckoned with. Like, there are a lot of, like, Mary Louises and, like, just, like, conscript units that have just been, like, called up. Um, the Cavs not as good because they've lost so many horses in, like, Russia. Uh, they can't, they don't have the same, like, quality of Cav. Uh, so it'd be really interesting. I'd love to see like an 1813 sort of like French. It's honestly probably one of my favorite periods of like the uh, of like the Napoleonic Wars. I don't know why we got silent muskets, but we do. Thought I'd sorted that out. There's another Russian general dead. I think that might be Dutrov not being murdered. Yeah, Dutrov being murdered. Um, but yeah, so it, I think yeah, 1813 like as a period for like cause would be really really interesting because. Uh, it's kind of like when the the Allies obviously take their ascendancy, and the the French is kind of like it's confirmed that they are doomed. Like you kind of felt like after like with like battles like Dresden and Bautzen, uh, Napoleon maybe had a chance of rehold like holding some line and maybe bringing the Allies to the negotiating table. But after Leipzig, that was a no go. Like they were they they smelled blood. And you can see now that I'm desperate trying to get these troops across, getting them in column. I'm just trying to rush across this ri this river. Because I know the French are going to set up here, and they'll set up, and they'll just gun down my troops. They've got a gun here that they're going to just, like, this looks like a 12-pounder. They're going to put this unit, they're going to put that gun straight in here, and then they've got their infantry support. And what have they got? They've got, like, Hessian troops here. These guys aren't that great. I needed to take them out. I should have looked at their, uh, their army a little bit more in depth, and I could have just gone, yep, yeah, Germans, 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 we'll take them out. 
Well, the Germans are good, but they're not that good. Not as good as the, the proper Frenchies. You can see I'm just throwing in units to try and break these foot. Like, I mean, the Swiss are doing pretty well in combat. This is, it's annoyingly taking too long to break. Uh, because otherwise, I've maybe been able to get some of these other guys. You can see the Curassis now haven't been sent in. They're going to, like, duel with literally the entirety of the Russian cab that's left by the looks of it. They may still win. That's the annoying thing. They've got the goons coming in. And there you go. It looks like it. now I have the job of just running across this river. And that's, that's, there's nothing I can do. I either run across this river and try and win a the mil and a, a must rest a while. and a musket fight. But I mean, the problem with that is, is that there's a gun here just waiting, and I'll just shoot anything that stands at a musket fight in canister. So I have to charge the gun, break the gun, and then I have to just fight them in a musket fight. Jeez, uh, oh, this is brilliant that they are shooting their own gun crew. This is amazing, um, but they still managed to get off some volleys on me with their artillery, which is just. Really annoying. This is a great position they have set up here, and the French are going to do the same on the other side by the looks of it. They're going to—they actually have got quite a lot across on this side. I mean, the the Russians, there is hope. The Gratian is still alive, but I do not see him defeating Our that French army. Running, and my troops are now running. So I was desperately just running. Now you can see I'm like the troops obviously going to be tough. Oh, jeez, look how many men die in one wave. It's so painful. But I have to try and just take the gun out. I cannot sit idly and wait. I have, like, the longer I wait here, the longer, like, the French can entrench their position. I mean, they're already basically entrenched now. It's just brutal. Um, I mean, I've got our, we have our artillery back here, and we can wheel it up, but it's just going to take so long to get here. And at this point, I actually do think I, uh, I do retreat. I am kind of rethinking my situation. But honestly, there's not much I can do. There is literally not much I can do. There was also like some French infantry that apparently we left back here, but honestly, I did not care about it. Uh, I was like, this is all we have to worry about is just what's in front of us. Don't care about what's behind us. That's dead, basically. That's getting killed by Russian winter and, uh, and Cossacks. We don't worry about that. It's these guys that could get away, and I'm not allowing it. These, co these guys can't be uh, spared the death of the Russian winter and Cossacks. There you go, you can see the French. Actually, the French haven't really defended this river as much, like, as cheesy anyway as uh, on the other side, but it looks like they might get across here, the Russians. They have to obviously defeated the uh, Curassiers with, with several losses, but, I mean, still got a decent amount of cav, actually. Although that's not really that great. Cav coming across on a river, not really the most effective, uh, effective thing in the world. Our men are running, sir. Yeah, my men continue to run. I'm just, I'm trying to just set them up now in a in a line battle. Like I set, I sent my cav forward, my uh, hussars, just to route this unit or to scare them off the guns. Uh, I think I may, I don't know if I even got. No, I didn't even get them off the guns. They're still alive as the crew. But now I can set up, I can set up my infantry and try and duel them. And I was under, I was under the impression that I'd route these troops over here so quickly, like these Russians. I just do uh, these, uh, sorry, these French uh, units, like mainly Germans. And I was looking, I was like, these are kind of mainly Germans here. There are Poles. Poles aren't that great in combat, in like, uh, not in combat, in a, in like, a line battle. I should route them. Uh, but I'm having a tough time. Here are the French units that are, like, still alive, which is kind of just annoying. Got, like, a little, like, Baltic Air unit there, and, like, one of the, uh, like, one of the German units. It's a funny green unit that I don't know the nationality of. That's still alive. Um, but yeah, you can see over here, France has now charged Russia. They're sending their cavalry. And they are, I mean, they're getting gunned down by the Russians. But they're also breaking plenty of Russians as well. And now Dragoon's going across. They're going to try and counter. It's starting to a really messy fight here. I really wish I kind of been more involved in this one. Maybe I should send troops across here. Because this seems like I had a little bit more chance of luck uh, paying off. But who knows? Well, the Russians have managed to get Cav across. It's really good, good to see. I mean, they may be able to get in. I don't know. There's not much, got much left over here. It's just mainly Cav. I really should have sent some infantry this way, but I was so determined. I was like, I'm just going to go for Russian waves. 
Russian wave tactics get in here, charge them. This is some poles we're fighting. And look at that, the Marine morale just goes straight down. I'm so surprised. And the French morale holds strong. I was so frustrated at this. And my troops are breaking like instantly on impact. And I think I'm trying to bring in my. Uh, I've got what well, we've got here, like. Got my cab coming back across. I'm desperate just to try and get some across. I haven't even got any grenadiers left. I've got some left. Not many though. Not many grenadiers left. And that's unfortunate. Yeah, the French basically getting no losses from this fight so far. I mean, I nearly broke this unit. I was really trying to focus this unit down, try and break this unit. But uh, if I could break that one, then I felt like I just didn't flank around. And I felt like I still had the ability to uh, to beat this French force here, but I don't know, it's tough. And you can see the Russians mass routing now. They, the French have somehow managed to stabilize their front. They've still got some pretty nasty, like, big units here. And it's not looking good. It's not looking good. It looks like they're going to manage to get across like they did in history. And uh, defend their crossings. And yeah, they did really well. I mean, in history, I believe it was like the uh, there's, like, some Dutch grenadiers and uh, some like... Our men are running. I'm like, I forgot, Dutch grenadiers, Dutch uh, engineers, sorry, not grenadiers, engineers that like were like jumping into the water and like trying to like uh, build build the bridges and I believe like most of them died like of like, hypothermia and other stuff because obviously they're jumping into freezing water to try and build the bridge. Um, but yeah, they, they clearly did a good job. I mean this looks, oh, this is almost a land bridge. This is not a bridge, this is a land bridge. No pontoons here. Just solid ground. But as you can see, I'm setting for my grenadiers. It's gonna be it's a risky job is what I'm about to do here. I'm like trying to support them with some uh, gunfire before they go in. Here they go, the charge begins. I bet the French the French will get a nasty volley off before they hit my guys here. Uh, not really actually. That's actually a pretty good charge. Oh, I say that. They break instantly. I felt like they didn't really get any hit, like charges in, like any like little shots in. There you go. Look at that. It's not helping that my troops are like mass routing. Like they're routing just because they're seeing other troops route. They just go, oh no. But uh, I mean, many of these may re rally on the other side of the river. But it's it's just too little, too late. Like I said, we kind of delayed like attacking here. Really, we should have started to uh, attack as soon as Dutro started to crip, uh, like crumble a little bit. I should be like, right, I should be like, right, let's take it. We need to just go. It's now do or die. I was maybe a little bit too protecting my army. Um, that's kind of on me. Um, but like I said, I felt like my only defense for like being a little bit protective was that if I, I had to be a presence back here and be scary for the French to make them like keep as many troops here as possible. Um, so Ney and Victor couldn't send troops this way, but eventually they kind of like managed to sneak across uh, by sacrificing some of their army. I should have really anticipated that they would sacrifice the troops to try and get the rest of their army across. Um, but yeah, I should have just like all out solid the across the line. It would have been a big risk and it could have gone wrong and it could have then made this battle uh, shorter, but it may have worked. But yeah, this is literally just like now at this point, um, I, I see no point to the fight. I mean, I've lost so many of my troops trying to get across and it'd just be the same again. This side, I probably should have maybe sent some troops in. I could have maybe made some... I maybe would have got uh, some uh, success there. You can see my uh, artillery is about to be sniped as well by the French. I was so annoyed at this. I was like, no, my artillery is going to get to the front lines. It's going to shoot at stuff. I was not happy. But uh, yeah, at this point, there's not much left. I'm just going to uh, fast forward a little bit. Because I don't think we... Uh, like the French or the uh, or us really make any sort of... Uh, some pushes. But yeah, so it'll... Uh, I mean, I think we're actually going to turn around and deal with the little French forces. Just out of spite, we're like, right, if we can't kill the main French army, we'll kill these two, you little units. You can see, yeah, my remaining troops here are just kind of, like, getting column and just kind of, like, have a little rest. They're getting shot at anyway. They're still getting shot by artillery. Like, the French actually got a decent amount of cross, but it is pretty close. Like, the, this was four armies originally of French. It's probably now about an army, if that. Maybe, yeah, it's probably about one army. And uh, you've got to think also that, like, Ney and Udino. Who were taken? Uh, not Ney. Um, Davu and Udino, who were taken out, are, like were away. taken out entirely. This is mainly Victor and uh, Ney, who are, like the weaker two cores, uh, like the two strong cores, were absolutely annihilated really at these crossings. Um, so yeah, really well done to like all the players in this one. Like French did really well, obviously, to get across, and uh, the Russian players also. We did. 
I'd say, I mean, apart from myself, I wouldn't say I did that great. But I think like the rest of the Russian players did a really great job in um, slowing the French down and just and also um, like yeah, just picking them off bit by bit. I mean, like the the river defense here was doing really well by Vigration. Um and then like Dutrov did his bit here, you know, slowing them down. Did a fair amount of damage over here to the uh, to the French. I mean, a little like little bits here and there. Obviously, it was a is a losing battle, but yeah, he did pretty well, and uh, yeah, that's so, this is so annoying, I couldn't turn my guns around in time to uh, to shoot the shooting, so that's a kind of retreat, but yeah, so, it, I mean, they all did really well, and the French obviously did exceptional to, like, persist in crossing this river here, and uh, and eventually getting there, I guess they eventually knew they were going to get across, my infantry was, really close. this was very close to my, my infantry, just about missing somebody to round three. Look at that, how close it was. This is kind of what we reverted to, but we don't have the time. We don't really, like, there is literally no time in this game left. And we're trying to, like, shell our way across. I mean, we are doing damage to these units, which is great, but, uh, we need to do this earlier. I mean, our artillery, this is the only problem. We probably needed fast moving horse artillery, but our horse artillery was so expensive. Uh, it's like sacrifice some troops and bring horse artillery, or just, or, or like, not. And bring foot artillery, which would eventually get there. Yeah, we're like gunning this unit down. This poor unit here is, I don't even think it's firing, uh, but it's like just getting shot at by line infantry. Oh, here we go. It might fire now. But yeah, this is, uh, this is kind of the battle. We don't really like, I don't think we make another crossing, or if we do, it's very much in vain. Um, but Gratian is still alive, actually, with like one little unit, like uh, Jaeger, but like not much. Not much at all. But here we go. Setting in my light infantry, I'm just going to break this unit. In goes the cav. And we'll break that unit, and then there's like another little like Voltig air unit back here somewhere that gets routed. But yeah, that's kind of the battle. Berezina is going to go like history. The, the Russians are going to just miss out taking the French. But I think we've done a lot more damage to the French than the Russians did in history. I don't think like the French losses were too high. Um, but like if you take proportionally like their army, the lights that left... Like compared to like what actually was in history, like they got the majority of their army out. Did the uh, the French? They lost obviously some troops to like the river and the Russians, but um, there we've like taken out a lot of their troops. Um, I'd say a good 90, 85, 90 percent of their army is gone. Uh, this is not much of their army left. So yeah, I was quite like I said, very impressed with the uh, with how well we did. Because <laughs> little light light of June over here still harassing. This unit will never get out. This is trapped in Russia now. Um, but yeah, no, it's a really, really good fight. I really enjoyed it. I hope you guys did as well. It was certainly a really fun one. Um, like I said, if you have been enjoying it, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're around here, and a comment to show your support. And uh, yeah, we'll just kind of fast forward now until the end screen, really. I don't think there's um, there's anything really going on. I maybe make another charge across the river, just to, like, no, I don't even try it. I don't even try to make another crossing. There you go. Um, but yeah, it was a really, really fun battle. Um, I su somehow got the second most kills. I'm not really sure how. I guess I did a pretty decent job. I was kind of like pushing quite hard on um, Ney and Victor at the end and maybe where I got most of my kills but until then I didn't really fight too much apart from the big cab fight. Um, but yeah me uh, well done to uh, well I was about to say well done to me but no. Well done to Clarky boy who was joining me at the back uh, playing as the other Thomas of Army. We did a, he did a really really good job. Um, brought a much smaller army because he did a lot of cav. We did a really good job and also got um, over a thousand kills, which is really, really good. Uh, Johnny, obviously, getting the most kills for the Russians, did a really, really good job uh, defending that uh, river as Bagration. And then Dutrov, played by uh, Busty Pigeon, did a really, really good job there. And uh, just getting shy of a thousand kills, but he did a good job. And then we got Fork, number two, uh, who was playing as Davu, getting nearly uh, nine, well, got 1800 kills, getting on for 2000. And yeah, did a really good job there. We got Don playing as uh, Ney's army, uh, had a pretty rough time, especially when he lost his general. And then we have Richard Lionheart, who's playing as uh, uh, Victor. He had a... Uh, they did okay. They, like, both those armies didn't really get too many kills, but their job wasn't to get kills. Their armies uh, were literally supposed to just be rear guards and uh, retreating. And then we've got Duke here, who got uh, 1,300 kills dead, playing as Udrino. So well done to him. Um, but yeah, there are... That is the uh, all the kills. We'll quickly look at my unit stats. Um, i got Lion of Jew with 193 kills. is pretty good. Some Lion of Jew with 170 um, but yeah, I had mainly infantry and my cav did nothing really. I kind of just sent it in and it kind of like pinned down another cav uh, until like 
we just got like hordes of cavalry then to overwhelm them. But yeah, that was a really, really good fight. I hope you guys did enjoy the Battle of Berezina, and I will see you guys in the next one.